Good morning. Welcome to Gloria Dei. We are so glad that you could be here with us this morning. A special th thank you to visitors for attending this morning and a special greeting to those who are joining us on Zoom or Facebook Live today. A couple of announcements before we begin. First of all, today is World Hunger Sunday. You likely received a packet of information in along with your bulletin this morning when you walked in. I invite you to look through those that information as you have time and interest and invite you to consider a special offering with the envelope um, that was provided in your bulletin as well. Secondly, today after the service, we are having a belated one year installation, one year anniversary celebration of Pastor Alyssa's time with us here. So we invite you to join us after the service for burgers and desserts and speeches and other sort of fun things. If you brought a baseball cap this morning with you, we invite you to wear it at that time and just celebrate Pastor Alyssa's time with us so far. Another announcement about this upcoming week, Monday through Wednesday, Pastor Lissa and I will be up in Newport for the Bishop's Conference. Just a note, that's where we will be. Uh, if for any reason you need pastoral care, feel free to call the office and they will make sure that that information uh, is dispersed so that you can get the pastoral care that you need. And finally, we are doing something a little bit new but also in some ways familiar this morning we will be having communion with bread where folks are invited to come forward however because we haven't done this for two and a half years uh there may be a few hiccups here and there so we invite you to just go with the flow laugh along with us and we will figure this out uh in the weeks to come with that are there any announcements from the community that people would like to lift up yeah. Yes, so Honora was gracious enough to bake us bread this morning. And as far as I know, and I'm trying to find and see if Honora is here with us this morning or not. Okay. It is vegan and gluten-free. Thank you to those who uh, shared that information. And with that, unless there's anything else, uh, if the choir would like to come forward for our call to worship this morning. Dave and Mo are ill today, so we're going to do our best without them. I invite you to stand in body and spirit for this morning's confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn, hymn number 725. <laughs>
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
let us pray together the prayer of the day. God of abundance, you provide us with plants and animals to maintain the world you created. Guide us in being good stewards of this abundance so that all might have life-sustaining richness. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. First reading is from Genesis chapter 32. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, for I have seen God face to face and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip, the word of the Lord. Second reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 3. But as for you, continue, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, 
They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to the myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 18th chapter. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to God's chosen ones who cry out to God day and night? Will God delay long in helping them? I tell you, God will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Humanity comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. You. you may be seated. Do we have any kids here who want to come forward? Awesome, I see a couple. Come on up. Can you both see this? Kind of, okay. So today is World Hunger Sunday. You heard that, right? So a lot of what we do as the ELCA is taking care of people. And that means we spend a lot of time raising money and trying to help feed people who don't have enough to eat. And I just wanted to show you this map. Do you know what county we live in? Come on, yeah, Coos, Coos County. Do you know where that is on this? Do you know where it can find Oregon on this map? Yeah, right there. So let's look at this. And where is Coos County? You know? We're actually this one right here, that dark green one. And that means, so there's three of that color in the state, right? And that color says that we have one of the highest rates in the state for child hunger. So that's all the kids, everybody 18 years old and younger in 2020 in Coos County, they're 21.8% who don't have enough food. That's a lot, isn't it? So this isn't just far away. We like to think about it being, you know, we send money somewhere else to help feed people or, you know, it, but not necessarily right here sometimes, but it really is, it's right here. And we do a lot here to help feed kids too. That's important. You can't do anything without eating, can you? No. 
So that's some of the work that God calls us to do. And that's what we try to do and what today is about. Will you pray with me? Jesus, thank you for giving us the food that we have to eat. Please always bless it for us. Bless us with it. And help us to have the energy to go play and to work hard because of the food that you provide. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. This morning, we celebrate many things. It's been quite a year. Some of you might remember my last Sunday as an intern when I loved this community so much that I couldn't finish my sermon. And I think Pastor John stepped in and finished reading it for me because I was a mess. And then a year ago, when you called me and I accepted and was able to start as your pastor, a different role than an intern, which is usually a no-no. The interns don't go back to their congregations as pastor. But who am I to follow rules? <laughs> and we have done so much. The year has gone so fast. We've gone from worship online only, the kind of in-person, back to online, the kind of in-person, to fully in-person, to masks, to no masks, to masks, to no masks, to masks, to no masks, and some more. We've welcomed your 11th intern. We've moved forward with housing project, partnering with NHA, the property behind the church. So much has happened and so much to celebrate. And as we also this morning celebrate Hunger Sunday, this World Food Day. And we mark that with a loaf of bread, not just your little cracker under the wrapper. It's a step toward a more normal communion, whatever that means now, today. We celebrate God gathering all of us together in our partnership in ministry. And one of the things that I've always loved about this congregation is that every celebration involves food. Food that gives us life, nourishment, and community. In our gospel this morning, we meet this widow who's not even on the social ladder. This widow in Jesus' parable, this beautiful, persistent woman who doesn't care what the rules are. She doesn't care that as a widow, she's not supposed to have value. She doesn't care that her status as a human being has been taken away from her because she has no man to care for her or because she is no longer the property of her husband and is now not even valued as a piece of property. What she cares about is justice. And she persistently demands justice. Power to the cranky old bat. She's nagging, demanding this justice against her opponent. And we don't really know who this opponent is. I don't know if it's a specific person. But I wonder maybe if her opponent is this culture that's driving her away that sees her as valueless, that refuses to acknowledge her humanity. 
society that treats some as humans and some as less than human. And this judge who we know as the unjust judge, who had no fear of God or respect for humans or anyone. I read this text and automatically make God the judge in this parable. And then I wonder if that's the only way to read this. With God as judge, the message becomes, if we bother God enough, God will give us what we ask for. Eventually. Just because we're annoying. And it becomes all about us, how hard we pray, how hard we work to get God's attention, how perfectly we can live into God's whims. And I don't think that's how it works. What kind of loving God is that? What kind of God is going to ignore a plea for help? What kind of God is only going to respond simply to get someone to go away? And that doesn't mesh their Lutheran proclamation that God is a God of love and grace, of absolute forgiveness, no matter what. Meaning there is nothing we can do to change God's love for us and God's love for humanity and all of creation. So I wonder what if in this parable, God is the widow demanding justice? What if God is the one begging, pestering, bothering, demanding? And maybe finally somewhere, humans respond in our limited ways. Maybe sometimes even if only to get God to leave us alone. God doesn't do that either. God pesters us. We who so quickly fall into the sin of failing to respect others, creation. This God pushes us and challenges us even yet as we gather around God's table to feast. If God is pushing us, persistent, in gathering us together as community, we gather around the Lord's table, communion or the Eucharist, as a meal we share, In our current practices or traditions in the church, it's easy to forget the communion was at one time a meal around the table, not just a little piece of bread and a little sip of wine, but it was a meal, a full meal. Relationships were built around that table. And this meal is consumed by those gathered by God. Our culture wants to tell us that the bread and the wine is just about me and God. That I do this for me and God gives me something to return. But God says, no, this is about the whole community. Relationship gathering around a meal where all are welcome. All have their hunger and their thirst satisfied. This morning, God invites us to feast. To feast at the table, gathered together in community, nourished in faith, and sent back out into the world to do God's work.
Amen. Our hymn of the day is 726. I invite you to stand in body or spirit as we confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For all the baptized, that they be filled with compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant all your people persistence in proclamation and prayer. God of grace, hear our prayer. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere 
and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right and just. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal justice systems. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or stricken with grief. Bring peace and wholeness to all who are in need, including Heidi, Leslin, Don, Eleanor, Judy, Ray, Jeff, Dick, Julie, Tony, Richard, and all those we name aloud or in our hearts at this time. In our joy and in our tears, be near to us, O God. God of grace, hear our prayer. For those in our congregation and community engaged in advocacy work, that with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. God of grace, hear our prayer. For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace, especially Lonnie Gilbert, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. God of grace, hear our prayer. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share signs of peace with each other this morning.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table, come taste and see. And I'm gonna explain a little bit more, mess you up, Becky, about how we're gonna do this because this is one big experiment today. Um, You may be seated first. And I will forget something and we will have confusion. And as intern Emily said earlier, laugh and go with it. So those of you who have your cups and want to remain in your pews, you are welcome to do that. No judgment, no shame. That's perfectly fine. And um, as you feel comfortable. 
Those of you who would like to come forward, intern Emily and I will be standing up front here. We'll start with the piano side. And those of you on that side, you'll come forward, receive your bread. I have sanitized my hands. You will have the op option to take grape juice, the white cups in the center of the trays, or the wine is the red on the outside. Pick up your own, drink your wine, and there are waste baskets on the corners to drop it in on your way by. <laughs> And then we'll switch sides and we'll swap spots up here and then this side will go. Does that make sense? Awesome. Let's give this a shot. And we can continue with the Lamb of God.
Is the body of Christ given for you? Is the body of Christ given for you? Is the body of Christ given for you? And if there's anybody who has their cup and didn't come forward, I invite you to open it. Receive the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite you to stand for a prayer. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, 
making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive God's blessing. We are not a voice for the voiceless, for all have a voice, even as the world seeks to drown them out. Go forth and listen for their cry in the wilderness so that you may amplify it. Amen. Our sending hymn today is hymn number 674. <laughs> Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord.